All right, ladies and gentlemen, we now bring in the head coach of the Kent State Golden Flashes, Sean Lewis. Coach, an opening statement, please. Yeah, um, you know, obviously not the outcome that we were looking for. Um, Buffalo is a great program. Coach Leipold and his staff have done a tremendous job. Um, knew that we were going to be going against a, a really strong opponent, uh, per, particularly in, in the rushing attack, and they proved to be just that. Um, you know, I, I think it's a good measuring stick right now of where we are at as a program to where where Coach Leipold has his his program and, and the direction that you know that they have headed over the past few years, and, and really the the firm grass that they've had on the East. So new coming into this thing, that uh, it was going to be a good, like I said, good measuring stick of where we're at. Um, obviously learned some tough lessons today, some things that we got to go back, we got to apply so we can continue to grow and improve. So the next opportunity that we get to come out, obviously we can be on the right side of things, but really proud of our kids, um, you know, and, and there's some great gritty individual efforts that were put out there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll clean up the X's and O's side of it when we get back and get an opportunity to look at the tape. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, been a nice little run here with the win streak. Didn't come the way that we wanted it to today, um, but got some great opportunities ahead of us that we need to get better at and, and go forward. Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, let's turn things over to our constituents here. Ben from uh, Ben Pagani from TV2, you had a question. Coach Lewis, um, last week you told us that your defense and your coaching staff had a plan in place to stop Jared Patterson. And I don't know if you've taken a look at the final uh, sheet yet, but today he tied the record for most touchdowns um, in a game and was 19 shy or 19 yards shy of uh, breaking the NCAA record. There are also two additional rushing touchdowns. That's not something that's really correctable for a next game, let alone a full season. So what can you say about the state of your defense and where do you want to be after this game? What's it going to take for you to get there? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not where we want to be. Uh, felt like our plan was solid going into things, but obviously when you come up against really good players, there's the old, uh, you know, that, that good players are, are, are good players for a reason. You know, we're not the only ones that have had our hands full with, with Jared Patterson in this offensive line, which is one of the best ones in the league. Um, you know, and, and it's something that we have to continue to go back and make sure that we're getting personnel in the right spots. Um, I have to do a good job making sure that we got guys that are, are, are close to the football, that need to be close to the football, and, and I need to do a better job, you know, making sure that we got the proper pieces in place. That, that falls to me. And uh, over time, we got to continue to do a great job developing in the weight room. We got to continue to do a great job developing our players that are here, raising their football IQ so they understand where their help is at, where they're not trying to do too much. And then obviously getting out and continuing to recruit and get great players in here. Got great players that are here. Um, but, you know, again, it's something that has been developed over time here over the course of six years to where this offensive line has been developed. This run game has been developed. They're a really good program. Um, and, and the same way that this one event occurred this afternoon, obviously, it's happened over time to where they've gotten this program to where it's at. And uh, we need to continue to grow ours. What about your program exactly? Where does this issue take stem from? Is this an issue that comes from coaching, playing, or recruiting? It's hard to pinpoint one thing. I, I like our plan and I like where we're at. And we got to continue to grow and develop in all areas so that we can be stronger in all areas. What's the first thing you're going to do in practice this week with that line? First thing I'm going to do is look at myself, see how I can be better as the head coach to make sure that there's the proper priorities put on stopping the run so that there's a greatest, greatest ownership and greatest emphasis starts with me first and foremost so we'll address how much time we're spending in inside run and make sure that everyone knows the importance of it in the program but it starts with me i just want to ask one more question about um the play at the end of the first half you guys had a fourth and one and you guys were really close to getting in you could have kicked a field goal and you went for a shotgun pass and a lot of people were questioning that um, myself included do you still think that that was the right call because that really could have changed the way that the game uh moved forward into the second half 100 percent I think I probably mismanaged that situation to where our offensive line was getting movement at the time. We were probably averaging five yards to carry ourselves with our ability to run the ball. You know, we're having success in our 10 personnel, spreading them out. Also, 50 made a great play, but when you look back on it, hindsight being 2020, sure, take the points there. It's an eight point game. You get the ball to start the second half, you win the middle eight. It's a mismanagement situation. Again, that falls directly on my lap as the head coach of this program, and I need to be better in that situation. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Owen, you said you had a uh, question. Owen McMillan from the Kent Stater. Uh, yeah, Coach, when you have, uh, when you're going up against uh, a run offense that's this effective, and when you have someone who's having the insane few games, but specifically today that Patterson was having, uh, how, how much does it hurt 
when your offense has so many uh, miscues, specifically the illegal receiver down the field on a lot of the RPOs, uh, how, you know, how much does that limit your offense and how do you correct that going forward? I don't think it limits us. Anytime you have penalties and self-inflicted wounds, obviously that's not ideal. That's not what you want. That's our style of play. And we're going to continue to be that way. It's been really, really good for us. We'll continue to stay the course with it. Um, but you know, any self-inflicted wounds, it, when you're playing a, a really good team and a really good player on an exceptional day where they're having a, a big time day, that's going to hurt. Alan, I'll turn things over to you with the record courier. Alan, Alan I think you're muted. Alan, you're still muted. Still muted. Can't hear you. Now we good? There we gotcha. go. Okay, sorry. Um, you, you mentioned you had some extra time to prep for this. Um, you know, you, you put all this work in. I'm sure you had a, a plan you were very confident with, and then he busts one off for 62 yards in their first play. Uh, what? How, how demoralizing is that? How, how? What were the kids' reaction to that? Do you think that kind of set a tone that you just really couldn't ever get, get the bleeding stop there? No, I don't think so. I think it's one play. Um, you know, our kids do a great job of having the ability to clear it and refocus. And there's times where they fit the run really, really strong. And it, when our plan was in place, obviously there's a lot of moments today, guys, where that didn't happen. Um, and, and we need to be better. Uh, and again, that starts with me and starts with the way that we planned and prepared, um, you know, and the way that I managed the days, I'll go back and I'll assess that. So when we get in this opportunity again, we manage that situation better. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's demoralizing. And again, I don't think this one loss is going to be demoralizing in any sense of the way. You know, I, I, obviously the, the winning streak and all the wins was really, really good. And we were riding that wave, um, but we never got too hot because there was lots of things that we needed to improve. Uh, this is one loss. We're not going to get too low. There's things that we got to improve. And we'll go back to work and, and we'll work on improving those things so we can strengthen our weaknesses and continue to grow on our strengths so we can go out and play better the next time we get an opportunity to do that. Um, you know, offensively, a little bit of a slow start, but then you get it going. Um, just talk about that. I mean, able to, you know, they're down 14 0 real quick. He's going crazy, but, uh, you know, you got going and you got kind of in a shootout game and you probably feel a little bit, you know, comfortable in that situation at, you know, being what you are. Yeah, I mean, we got a resilient group of kids, you know, and we knew that it was going to be a four quarter fight, or we, or we at least knew from a year ago and in, in the games in the past and how talented they were that it was going to be a four quarter fight one way or the other. So, you know, our kids just kept putting their chins to their chest and, and going back to work, and they feel like they can score at any point on the, on the field at any moment in time. So they never feel like they're out of it. And, uh, you know, for, for the most part, a lot of guys continue to battle to the very, very end. Um, you mentioned the, the aggressiveness on defense that you've worked on this year and wanting to be more aggressive. Um, ask you about that last week. And you said, you know, that's what we are. We're not going to tone that down. Um, did they kind of, were they able to take advantage of that based on the fact that they are so good at doing what they're, what they're doing there? I, I think they won a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups. I, I don't think it has to do with anything in terms of our temperament or demeanor that we're too aggressive on defense. If that's the knock guys that were too aggressive on defense, I'll wear that knock every single day of the week. Uh, I, I think you have success by taking the ground that's in front of you, um, not by standing and holding the ground that you got. So, you know, if we're too aggressive, okay, we're too aggressive. There's a lot of things that we got to get cleaned up. Again, starting with myself first and foremost, so that we can, our kids are playing back on their heels and not being aggressive and playing downhill. That's one thing that we're not going to change. Um, my last one, you know, you've you've had a lot of situations in these fourth and shorts where you've gone for it and in and, and different situations and been very aggressive today. A couple of situations where you could have gone for it. Are you, are you already kind of going back in your head and thinking about those things already, that type of thing? Or are those all just situations you take as they come? What, what, what are you thinking there? I mean, I, I think they're all situational based. Um, you know, I, I think ultimately the, the one fourth down conversion that we didn't get today was the one that Ben referenced where, where we went in shotgun, you know, and all of our snaps were in shotgun today. So the fact that that was a shotgun pass, obviously, you know, is, is that anything that's unique for us? And um, I think anytime, you know, in that one situation, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the one fourth down that we haven't gotten this year. Obviously very inopportune time not to get that. If anything I want to second guess about that is to get the points. You know, again, like we, we take pride in what we call the middle eight at that point in time, you know, getting three points there to make it an eight point game. And then again, getting the ball back in the second half could have managed that situation better. Um, but again, the same way that we're aggressive on defense, we're going to be aggressive as play callers and aggressive on offense. And um, 
again, if, if that's the knock of our football team, that at times we're too aggressive because I got a lot of faith in our kids to go out and execute and they, they, they thrive on that and our staff thrives on that, then okay, uh, I'll take the lumps that come with that. Um, but still believe that you got to be willing to risk it to get a biscuit every now and again. That hasn't changed. What were the kids like afterwards, Coach? Uh, you know, I, I think as you guys would expect, you know, they, they, they were confident in the plan. Um, there was a little bit of a letdown. Um, as you'd expect, it's a pretty quiet locker room right now. And, um, you know, I, I think everyone got a good piece of humble pie on this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, most notably myself from Coach Leipold. Great coach, great staff, runs a great program. Some very, very valuable lessons for us to all take out of this. But again, at the end of the day, it's, uh, I know it was a big game um, and obviously won that would have gave us some command and control of the East, but it's one game. It doesn't take away from all the great wins that we've had and what these kids have built over the course of three years. We'll take the lessons from it. We'll move forward and we'll continue to grow and improve as a family. All right. Last round of uh, questions, opportunities here for uh, Coach Lewis. All right, Coach, we thank you and uh, we appreciate your time. Guys, appreciate you guys. Go Flashes. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Dan. Yep, no problem. I will, Ben, you've got the link to the Dropbox, right, for the Mac? Then I'm, I'm going to throw all that stuff in there. That's good. Thank you. Yep.